Today, as a total network rookie, I will briefly discuss the topic of why a 2.5 or 10 gigabit network switch is so amazing and can be a true lifesaver in many use cases. In my case, the main thing benefiting from such a switch is my own personal NAS, which using such a high performance switch even enables data transfers at 10 and 2.5 gigabits per second with several PCs connected simultaneously. Today this spotlight is on a very specific switch that I have been eyeing for a long time, the QNAP QSW 21042T. That's the version with the Ethernet RJ45 ports. It is a nice compact fanless device. Could this be the ideal switch for one's NAS when a little more performance is required? In terms of pricing, at the time of this video, the QSW 21042T can be had for about 150 to 170 US dollars, which is neither particularly affordable nor expensive given the technology behind it. Using my personal example, I will show you why I couldn't do without such a switch and all from the perspective of a network layman, who I undoubtedly am. You really don't need to worry about the setup procedure. First, let's start with what comes included. We do get the switch itself, a power supply, rubber feet and wall plugs as well as a quick start guide. The first thing I do is attach the rubber feet to the bottom of the device. Of course, I have to do it the monk way because it appears I didn't quite attach the feet completely centered. You know, everybody has their quirks. But after two minutes, I was finally done with it. As already mentioned, the switch is really compact and measures in at just 34 by 180 by 145 millimeters. The build quality is excellent as the device features a solid metal case. I would like to point out right off the bat that this is an unmanaged plug and play switch, meaning basically no setup is required. This device is not only suitable for small offices and home offices, but also for professionals. The first indication of this are probably the two 10 gigabit ports followed by four 2.5 gigabit ports. In addition, a maximum switching capacity of 60 gigabits and a non-blocking throughput of 30 gigabits per second are specified. The same switch exists with the naming ending 2S, but that version actually comes with two SFP Plus ports. When buying, make sure you pay close attention to which model exactly you end up putting into your shopping cart. In the case of today's QSW 21042T, everything is connected using standard RJ45 Ethernet cables, which are rather convenient since existing network cables do not necessarily have to be replaced in order to upgrade, as long as you do not have to run many meters of said cables. I think it's great that the switch is passively cooled, completely fanless and therefore operating silently, hence the large ventilation holes on the sides. The maximum possible bandwidth for those respective ports is clearly and marked well on the switch. Furthermore, I always think it's great when there's a automatic loop detection built in to prevent and block unwanted loops. Now that's all well and good, but what are the use cases of a switch for the average consumer as well as myself? Let's start with how you could put one to use. Imagine your modem or router comes with four LAN ports, but your household or you yourself requires seven LAN ports for your individual devices, such as your PCs, NAS, TV or whatever. A switch can help with that by usually expanding your existing network without any further configurations, simply put. If you additionally want to ensure higher transfer rates for certain devices, for instance, between connected PCs and the NAS, then a 2.5 or even 10 gigabit switch is usually required. Provided that the NAS and PC come with their interfaces mentioned and support those bandwidths. And this is where my personal use case comes into play. As some of you may still know, a few months ago, my dear viewer Chris aka Krumshi sent me a NAS PC he built. This particular NAS is a work in progress right now and is still patiently waiting for a hard drive upgrade. I'd like to make use of 10 gigabit speeds for the NAS. The appropriate network card is already installed and configured. Now I have three options of connecting the NAS with the PC. Option 1 being a direct connection via 10 gigabit from the network card of the NAS to the network card of the PC. The issue with that is that only one PC would then have access to the NAS with high transfer speeds. 
Option 2. I simply connect via 1 gigabit LAN. The NAS would be connected to the router for internet access anyway, and that way I would have equally fast access with all devices on the network. The only catch? I would have to make do with a very limiting bandwidth of 1 gigabit per second, which would be anything but ideal for 4K video production. Option 3. I connect my 10 gigabit NAS to a 10 gigabit port on a network switch. Then I connect the 10 gigabit network card of my workstation PC to the second 10 gigabit port on this switch. This way I am still effectively making use of the direct connection to the NAS via 10 gigabit, but at the same time I can also connect more PCs or other devices via a 2.5 gigabit connection in order to be able to access the NAS data at high speeds. Setting up a 1 gigabit connection is generally very easy. For that, you won't be needing a switch, even when dealing with a bunch of devices. Things only become critical once the bandwidth, the transfer speed of 1 gigabit per second is no longer sufficient for certain tasks. By the way, gigabit and gigabyte are two very different things and unfortunately end up getting mixed up by many. To make it really easy for you, here's a little conversion. 1 gigabit per second equals a transfer speed of a maximum of 125 megabytes per second. 2.5 gigabit equals 313 megabytes. And as for 10 gigabits, we are looking at 1250 megabytes per second. Thanks to a switch like the QNAP QSW 21042T, I am able to establish a connection between my workstation PC and the NAS via 10 gigabits, while the other devices are connected to the NAS via 2.5 gigabits. Needless to say, the requirement for any of this to work is that the interfaces and bandwidths are actually supported by their respective devices. Conclusion. I was therefore very impressed by today's QNAP QSW 2104-2T switch. Sure, this might be a boring topic and product to some, but without such technology, the networking world would look pretty bleak. The QNAP switch does its job brilliantly for my area of application and therefore deserves a clear recommendation by me for all those who want to get a little more out of their network and their devices. What are your thoughts on network switches in general? Do you use any, and if so, what kind of speeds? Are 1 or 2.5 gigabits good enough for you, or do you absolutely need to have 10 gigabits like me? If you enjoyed the video, I'd greatly appreciate a like, and if not, let the dislike button take care of it. With that in mind, thank you very much for watching, and until the next one.